What you guys got another video here for you. What happens when you overload your power supply? Got quite a few questions about the small form factor PCs. First off, let me clarify that these little mini PCs were never really designed to be a gaming system. Online, you'll see a lot of YouTubers creating content about small form factors and turning them into uh, gaming PCs and video editing PCs. You can see I've added a little fan on here to get some uh, airflow. With these small form factors, it's pretty difficult to get airflow in here because there is no intake fans or exhaust fans. So that's why I did this little fan on here to just add some cool air. Now, like all small factor computers, they always come with low wattage power supplies. And this is where you're going to find the biggest problems. And I wanted to make this video to clarify the difficulties you're going to face when you're using stuff like this. You can see this as a 220 watt power supply and that's its maximum output. You can see the amps on there as well as and you can see it's 15 amps on the 12 volt rail. Now, another problem I see is when people start adding a GPU to the equation, this causes a lot more problems. It causes more heat and it also requires more power draw. And these little machines weren't really designed for gaming systems, really. But there is a low profile graphics card that you can buy. And of course, it's recommended that you use a 300 watt power supply. And we're only using a 220 watt power supply. And this goes right up to 1650 uh, GPUs here. You can see this one requires 300 watts, the MSI version, and it also requires 75 watts of power consumption there. So power consumption 75 watts, and I recommended a 300 watt PSU on there. Now this is the one I got in here, a GT1030 low profile 2 gig card, and someone suggested that I put a 1650 in there. Still requires a 300 watt power supply, but again, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, we've only got a 220 watt PSU and it's going to push real close to its limitations. And this will cause a lot of problems for that computer down the line. And this is the sort of information that people gloss over when they are uh, giving you recommendations to build or buy these uh, small form factor PCs. You can see here we've got SATA ports on here for hard drives. I have put an NVMe drive in here. And right now you can see I don't have any hard drives in here or any other uh, components now if we do start adding this drive cage back in here and put in say for instance a mechanical drive in here with a solid state drive and use this as some sort of plex server this is going to bump up the power requirements by quite a bit so the more stuff you add the more power draw that is going to be required and of course we've only got that 220 watt power supply which is a little bit lightweight so we have to take all of this into consideration. Airflow is really limited in here. So the more stuff we add, the more heat and the temperature goes up. And of course, that's going to put more stress onto the power supply as well because it can't breathe. And it's asking a lot of these little proprietary uh, power supplies. You may be thinking, let's just swap it out. But in this small form factor, it's not possible unless you mod the case. Now let's take a look at overloading the power supply scenario. Best case scenario would be system freezes, overheats and thermal shutdowns. A more probable case scenario would be it will blow a fuse on the PSU or the PSU will burn out and fry all the components. A more serious case scenario would be the PSU would cause electrical fire. It gets really, really hot and it will cause an electrical fire on the system. So let's turn on the PC here. Sorry for the poor shot, but I just wanted to show you what would happen when we boot up the PC. So remember, we've only got that NVMe drive in here and we don't have any other hard drives or anything else on the system. So I'm going to power it on and we'll see what happens with the power drawn here. You can see it booting up here and keep an eye on there. It's 40 uh, watts, 50 watts. And you can see it going up 64, 86, 96, 101 watts on boot up. So let's do Prime 95 here and do maximum power test for the CPU here. Now remember, this is just the CPU and you can see it's at 197 watts, which is very close uh, to the threshold of that power supply. It will drop down into a more safer uh, environment once it settles but it is pretty high and that's what you've got to be careful of uh, it will spike and get very high 
in those scenarios. You can see here the CPU is at 100% and it's not even taxing the memory or the disk or the uh, GPU as of yet. It's not using any GPU at all. So this is just CPU. And this is where you've got to be a bit more mindful about what you're doing. So I'll quickly run an OpenGL uh, benchmark test here and we'll take a look at what happens. You can see here we're now getting and you can see that's just getting to like 140 watts. And if I leave it, it'll probably get a little bit higher. But 140 watts taken away from 220 watts leaves 80 watts. It doesn't leave a lot left. And that's where you need to be a bit careful. We haven't even got any hard drives plugged in here or any other items. And I can tell you the PC is pretty toasty it's getting pretty hot so you don't want to be exceeding the power limit on your power supply and basically that's exactly what can happen when we start to push these little mini pcs to the extreme and these can cause problems now remember these scenarios are stress testing and they're probably not quite real world scenarios but if you was gaming for long periods or you're video editing and you're using your little system uh, to the maximum like some people do then the power supply is going to get really really hot and it can cause a lot of problems when you keep spiking and drawing more power than what you have available which can then cause those scenarios which we was talking about earlier and uh, you know depend on what type of uh, cooling solution you have here things can get pretty hot inside here so I've basically uh, botched a, a fan on the side here to try and keep it nice and cool because it was getting really hot inside here before I did any of this uh, upgrades. So what is a safe level to be using a little mini system like this um, without causing yourself any problems? I would say that if you're using something like this little mini PC or a Dell Optiplex or any of these little systems, you really don't want to be pushing that power supply uh, to its maximum limit or exceeding uh, its maximum uh, wattage capacity. Yes, it will allow you to put a graphics card in these systems, and yes, it sometimes will power on, and sometimes you may have issues trying to get a graphics card to even work on some of these systems because of the proprietary re requirements uh, for these mini PCs. So you need to do a bit of research. But if you're asking my personal opinion, I would not suggest that you put uh, a graphics card that is going to require too much power draw from those little power supplies. So you don't really want to be exceeding uh, the power limitations of these. We have requirements for a reason. You should try to stick to those for safety reasons. If you're pulling too much power on those little power supplies, they can catch fire, and I've seen it happen. So you've got to be very careful uh, with these little power supplies and pushing them to their maximum or exceeding their maximum uh, capacity. So I wouldn't advise doing it. Uh, always uh, try to upgrade and get a better power supply uh, to stay safe. So make sure you do your calculations of how much power draw you're going to be requiring for your system and also leave yourself at least 100 to 150 watts of headroom. That means spare wattage available for you adding in new products whenever you uh, want to upgrade without the risk of running out of power this way you can safely use your power supply and your computer without having any sort of issues now remember whether you buy an ultra small form factor small form factor or any of these small little pcs whether it be a dell uh, acer hp or any of these small form factor pcs they were never really designed to be hardcore gaming systems yes you can game on them but just stay within the limitations of that power supply and you should be safe uh, just don't overdo it anyway but that said my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope this video has been some sort of use to you and i hope it's been helpful i just want to say a big shout out to all my youtube members who have joined my youtube members group i do appreciate the support and i'll see you again for another video real soon thanks again for watching bye for now Thank you.